It's April and this is the Library Roadshow. On the show today, digital learning and engagement at a distance. Welcome to the April edition of the Library Roadshow. I'm Mary Stein, and this is a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. This spring, we're all facing unprecedented challenges due to COVID-19. As of videotaping time, all 14 libraries are closed and bookmobile services suspended. We're asking you to keep all your books and DVDs at home until it's time to reopen, but don't worry. We've extended all your due dates and we're going to hang on to your holds. We've also renewed all current library cards so that no one experiences any interruption of service when they log on to the digital library. If you have a question about your account or need information or help accessing the digital library, telephone service is currently available from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. You can also send your questions to eref at ebrpl.com. We're also pushing information out about the digital library via email, Facebook, Twitter, and other media. For those of you who are suddenly conducting class at home, let me remind you that the Kids page highlights all kinds of great tools and resources. There are so many, it's hard to know where to start. So they even added a website walkthrough. And of course, if you call us or email us, we can easily guide you to the right resource for you. Children's Services staff have also freshly posted such things as virtual museum tours, games for preschoolers, and of course, homework help. In the meantime, We've ramped up production of our digital bedtime story times and added toddler time and story starters. These videos can all be found on the library's kids' Facebook page. Our coronavirus info guide is a handy reference for official news about COVID-19 from Red Stick Ready, the CDC, and other officials, as well as helpful information for you and your family. We invite you to check the library's website at ebrpl.com for updates about hours for telephone services and, of course, reopening. Free access to books, audio, and library resources are just a few of the benefits available to you when you get a library card. Need free access to a computer? You get that. Want free access to premium digital resources like Mango Languages and Lynda.com? You get that. Need to book a meeting space? You get that. Heck, you can even check out a telescope or use a digital printer with your library card. If you live in East Baton Rouge Parish, pick up your free library card from your local branch library today. Premium access to everything the library system has to offer is waiting for you. For every kind of service or resource that the library offers in the real world, we also try to offer something to parallel it in the digital library. For years, we've checked out magazines, auto repair books, and even Chilton's manuals for our amateur garage mechanics. Since our powerful all data engine repair platform is in-house use only, we look for other resources that you could use from home, maybe even from under your car. Adam St. Pierre joins me now to explain in the digital download. Do you consider yourself an auto enthusiast? Do you typically install your own brake pads, but maybe need some guidance? The library carried Chilton manuals in paper form for years, but now we offer Chilton Library powered by Gale Resources. Chilton Library is continually updated and includes step-by-step service and repair procedures, wiring diagrams, maintenance tables, troubleshooting guides, and diagnostic trouble codes. And all of the instructions, guides, and procedures are full of photos, illustrations, videos, and animations. And it's even got test prep info for some of the ASE certification tests. And it's all available to you with that magical library card. Head over to the digital library and check it out. Thanks, Adam. I know that a lot of our patrons are spending a lot more time at home right now, 
So being able to do something really constructive related to maintaining or even repairing our personal vehicles is a terrific option. We also offer magazine and video how-tos in Small Engine Repair Re Reference Center and the Home Improvement Reference Center. There's really no excuse not to get your house in order. Let's shift gears and check in with Kayla Perkins, who reported in from Beyond the Stacks. It's that time again. Time for the One Book, One Community program. This year's pick is Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. We're at the Main Library at Goodwood for the annual kickoff party. Let's check it out. I'm Jessica McDaniel. I'm the Community Programming and Outreach Librarian here at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library. We're here at the Main Library at Goodwood for our One Book, One Community kickoff party. It's the first of two months of programming where we celebrate our One Book, One Community read. This year, it's Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Tonight at the kickoff party, we've got food, we've got fun, we've got music. Our, right behind us, we have IMI. It's a group of local Louisiana percussionists, dancers, and performers. Well, this evening, we're going to take you through a journey of the spirit, right? We're going to take you through a journey. We're going to give honor to the book. It tells a journey of two people who were in love. They went through a lot of pain and suffering and sacrifice and ended up together. So it was a great love story. And so we're going to just tell a love story of the spirit and try to, you know, move the spirit within the people that's got it here. I don't care who you are or where you go. If you have an open and a welcome heart, your journey through this life will be much sweeter. This next rhythm that we're going to play is a rhythm that welcomes you into our village. One Book, One Community program is a way to get everyone on the same page. We have our community read one book and we celebrate the book's themes and topics through pro library programming, book discussions, and all sorts of other things throughout the spring. Are there any games and prizes going on tonight? There are games, there are prizes. Uh, we have multiple door prizes where you can win a copy of the book. Uh, and of course we also have library card sign-up stations where if you don't have a library card and you want to check out a copy yourself, it's absolutely free. Our book's main character, Ifemelu, is a Nigerian woman who moves to America to go to school. Um, and there she discovers race as it applies to her identity. Um, it's a wonderful story about love, uh, the complexities of culture. Ifemelu starts a blog to discuss her experiences with race in America. Um, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful story for the whole community. Music is the soul. Music is the soul. People looking for it, uh, uh, how does music reach the soul? If music has to reach your soul, you haven't found yourself yet. And there you have it. But the fun doesn't stop here. We've got a whole season of One Book, One Community programming happening all throughout the end of April. To find out what's coming up next, just log on to readonebook.org. While we had a great kickoff for One Book, One Community at the beginning of March, we had to suspend public programming almost immediately afterwards due to COVID-19. But you can still participate in One Book, One Community from home. We have unlimited use copies of the ebook in OverDrive. Just use the Libby app to download your copy. And for those of you who like talking books, visit our RB Digital platform to check out your e-audiobook. Discussion questions, links to podcasts, and TED Talks, and other tidbits reside on the website at readonebook.org. Stay right there. After the break, Andrew Tadman joins me for a chat right here on the Library Roadshow. As the nation's doctor, I often get asked, what should I do if I think I might have coronavirus? People who are sick should stay home. You don't go to an emergency room. You don't go to a clinic. You get on the phone and you ask for advice and instructions from your physician. We don't want you to go into the ER or the doctor's office without talking to them first because you might spread coronavirus to someone else. Please visit coronavirus.gov for more information. 
You're watching the April edition of the Library Roadshow, everything you need to know about your local library system. Libraries provide community spaces for learning, engagement, and discovery. In addition to our large print and audiovisual collections, we offer thousands of classes and programs every year. But for the past 15 years, we've also focused on finding digital tools to supplement all of our collections, services, and programs. Joining me now to talk about the vast collection of resources that we call the Digital Library is Andrew Tadman, Coordinator for Reference Services. Okay, Andrew, now more than ever, what's happening out there in the digital library landscape? Well, as we've seen right now, it's really important to be able to access things from home. And we have um, online learning resources for pretty much all age groups um, from kind of self-improvement stuff to crafts to learning a new skill, software skills, so all kinds of things. So you don't have to just vegetate while you're observing the stay at home directive. You can actually improve yourself while you're there. Huh? Yeah, it's a perfect time when people have nothing else to do. <laughs> uh, and, and, and there's even things for babies. Um, for Miss Humblebee's Academy is there for you if you're starting to pull your hair out. Yeah, so um, that's for uh, pre-K age, where we have loads of stuff for um, kids from K through six and then for older kids too. So all ages and all interests. How are people using the digital library? Um, for most of them, you can go straight for our website and use it on a computer or on an iPad. Uh, or even some of them a have apps, yep, smartphones yeah. as well. So it makes it really convenient. And especially for the kids' things, they're really interactive. There's lots of animations, read-alongs, mm -hmm. songs, that kind of thing. So it really makes the um, using them enjoyable. It doesn't feel like schoolwork. That's important. And also, when we, when most people think of the digital library, if they're readers, they immediately think about eBooks. But these interactive resources. Uh, really take it to the next level because you can even do a virtual dissection if you're homeschooling. Yeah, absolutely. You, no a... smell. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the others? Yeah, well, Creative Bug's really great. It has um, thousands of video courses. Um, it covers everything from sewing, knitting, cooking, canning, decoration making. So um, there are on demand videos that kind of lead you through a well-planned exercise. So it's great to do with kids as well. So that's, the whole family can do it together. Right. So that's something that we're actually seeing because when we first got Creative Bug, I'm thinking adult crafters or 20-somethings, but there's all kinds of things for little guys in there that you can, uh, as you revise what's happening on your dining room table and your kitchen floor, there's things in there for you. And like you said, they're well-planned and and it's not like you're spending hours. They're, they're not that long, and they're immediately doable. Another similar thing we have is the Hobbies and Crafts Resource Center, mm -hmm. which um, help, covers a wide variety of hobbies. So now's a good time to look for a hobby that right. you can take up. Right, right, or grow so one that you have. So this will give you some ideas. Yeah, but you mentioned work or office. So, of course, we've, all, we've pushed L Linda for quite some time, but your newest offering, Udemy, uh, is, is available to anybody. Yeah, Udemy is really great. Uh, it's got dynamic courses. They're on-demand videos as well, so it's convenient. Um, you can take them on the app, or there's even a way to do them as podcasts. Oh, that's that's so good. So that's going to fit. That'll be convenient for the way people are managing now, because we're kind of in this half-and-half uh, -half world. Yeah, you of, make what you can work. That's right. Okay. And, of course, homework help. Now, what if you don't have a card? Well, for Homework Louisiana, you don't need a card. Okay. Because you can just go straight to homeworkla.org. So that's really great because if people didn't already manage to get a card, so you don't even need to pass go, don't pay 200 go straight to Homework Help Louisiana, and your kids can get access to free online tutoring for K through 12 and even beyond. Yeah, for adult learners too. But um, if you wanted to use any of our other resources and you don't have a card, then you can just... Um, Go to the digital library. Well, go to ebrpl.com, mm -hmm. and there's a place there where you can click to get a temporary online card that'll be good for a couple of months and let you access most of the digital resources. Right. Now, you said most. So, of course, OverDrive and RB Digital and a few other really premier resources do not work with that little virtual card. Yeah. But we have another option for you. 
if you didn't already come to the library and get your real library card, you can call us 10 between the hours of 10 and 2, Monday through Friday, and the librarian is standing by to help you get a computer use only card. Yep, that will let you get in, get all those ebooks. Thanks, Andrew. We've always been pretty proud of the digital library, but COVID-19 has brought it to the forefront for library services. My hope is that people who are drawn to the digital library because of this temporary situation will not only make great use of it, but also keep coming back and become lifelong digitarians. After the break, author Chris Warner. Plus, we have book reviews from one of our younger patrons. All that and more coming up next on The Library Roadshow. Buenos días. Estoy bien. Gracias. Welcome back to the April edition of the Library Road Show. Chris Warner was born in New Iberia, Louisiana. He attended LSU on academic scholarship where he earned himself not just one, but two PhDs. Chris is best known for authoring a series of books on SEC history and traditions. Chris joins me by phone to discuss the first title in his series. His updated edition is about to be released, A Tailgater's Guide to SEC Football. Okay, how did you get your start as an author? In 1999, I was doing my taxes with my accountant in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and he had noticed that I was writing for the Purple and Gold magazine, Tiger Rag magazine and had noticed in my columns, uh, you know, interesting things. And he said he thought I was a really good writer and that we should publish my columns in a book because we would be able to, my wife and I would be able to write off all those expenses for that new endeavor on our taxes. And uh, this intrigued me that if I wrote a book, I would be able to save money on my taxes. And so I began to think of what I would write about if I was going to write a book. And I didn't want to do anything small, so I thought big, and I thought I'll write about the Southeastern Conference as a whole, Southeastern Conference football, more specifically. And I wrote The Tailgater's Guide to SEC Football. Uh, I've written and published 25 books, and this was my first, and it remains the best-selling book that I have. It will be published for the fifth time uh, this year in 2020. What's this book about? The book is about the histories and traditions of the Southeastern Conference schools, the 14 member institutions, Alabama through Vanderbilt in alphabetical order. There's an intriguing history of college football in the South, links to the Civil War, why Southerners so avidly ascribe culturally to college football, and uh, famous alumni, where to shop and golf, where to go out to eat, drink in all the towns you can take over, and there's even Cajun tailgating recipes in the middle, Crimson Tide seafood gumbo, Razorback jambalaya, Death Valley crawfish etouffee, and the like. What inspired you to write this? You know, as a kid, before the Internet, I read. I read a lot, and I enjoyed sports books. And I was always fascinated with popular sports culture, and I can remember, you know, when I was young, Going to my first LSU football game and like all the other people pouring into the stadium and seeing that for the first time and experiencing that, that was a big deal. That truly inspired me. What response have you received from your readers? The book has been published four times. This will be the fifth time when I publish it this spring. And the response has been tremendous. Uh, there's over 30,000 copies of the book in print. It's done quite well. It's been around for about 20 years, the concept. And I keep trying to make it better. It's uh, quite an intriguing read, and people who enjoy traveling to watch their team play in the SEC find it uh, a really useful and captivating read. How can our viewers learn more about you, Chris? They can find more about me uh, online. I'm getting a website constructed right now for 
me and my books. So look for that. Um, Southern Beach Reads is what I operate under. I have a business. Uh, so Southern Beach Reads, you can look for that. You look for me, author Chris Warner. But uh, I have a website being built, and you can also contact me through Facebook. I do have a page, Chris Warner, on Facebook. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks so much, Chris. It's fun to take a step back and focus on the 2019 winning season. I know a lot of folks who've hit the replay button on their DVRs in order to get a little happy break to the day. It's now time in the show where we like to check in with one of our younger patrons to find out what they're reading. Hi, my name is Yahya, and my fa- and I am nine years old. My favorite book is The Phantom Tollbooth. It's about this boy named Milo that's clumsy, and so when he went to King Gazaz and asked him could he let rhyme and reason out of the dungeon, the dungeon that's in the palace of in the sky. So when he said he has this twin, another brother named the Math Magician. So when he he went all the way, he um from the Dictionopolis to Digiopolis, and he took him a really long time, and he met other people. So when the then back at his own um appetizing plate, it century didn't look worth eating, and he was right. Was so so very hungry. Here, try some summer salt. Suggested the Duke. It improves the flavor. Heavy ring more meat. Offer the count. Pass the bro basket or a ring muffin. Second, the minister. Perhaps you would care for a cinnamon bun. Suggest the Duke. My father and my mother take me to the library. When I come to the library, this is what I like to do. I like reading, plus going to, on the computers to play games. Thanks, Yehea. I hope you took that copy of The Phantom Toll Booth home. If you didn't, remember that you can download an ebook version of The Phantom Toll Booth for free from Overdrive. Just visit ebrpl.com and click on Overdrive. There are also lots of great ebooks for kids in Tumble Books, Tumble Book Cloud, and Teen Cloud. Stay right there. You're watching the Library Roadshow. Hello, my name is David Lotch. I am the genealogy librarian for the East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Our department is located on the second floor of the main library on Goodwood, in the Baton Rouge Room, where history comes alive. I want to talk to you today about church records. Today, when we think of official records, we think of those kept by various governments. It is to these institutions that we report the big events of our lives, births, marriages, and deaths. But this was not always the case in European cultures, or for their colonies and the countries they started here in the Americas. Colonies changed hands, governments rose and fell, and through it all, religious institutions remained constant. From the earliest days of European settlement in Louisiana, the Catholic Church was the de facto record keeper. These records, once kept by individual churches, were scattered across the southern portion of the state. That is, until the work of one very dedicated priest, Father Donald Hebert. He devoted his professional life to compiling and organizing these records into some 60 volumes that are very easy to use. These books, combined with a similar project at the Baton Rouge Diocese, mean that family histories in southern Louisiana can be traced, in some cases as far back as the early 1700s. As we say, if someone was born, married, or buried between Texas and Mississippi, we can find them in Father Hebert. Thank you for your time. You're watching the April edition of the Library Roadshow, a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. Did you know that there was so much interesting information about the history of Baton Rouge all under one roof? Even when the library's physical locations are closed, you can still access the Baton Rouge Room archive digitally at ebrpl.com. Just click the link on the homepage. A lot of you out there are self-isolating in response to the mandate issued by the governor. During this time, you can still make use of the free digital resources available through your East Baton Rouge Parish Library. 
Even Ancestry.com is temporarily available from home. So get started on those family trees. The East Baton Rouge Parish Library is always open at ebrpl.com. Take a look at your library card right now. You'll see a unique number right there on the card. That number is your key to unlock a world of free digital resources accessible now at ebrpl.com slash digital library. There are hundreds of digital resources at ebrpl.com slash digital library. Browse them alphabetically or by subject. Categories include ebooks, newspapers and magazines, entertainment including free music and streaming media, language learning and online education, technology training and how-tos, arts and crafts, home improvement and engine repair, business and management, careers and jobs, genealogy and history, tools for personal use in health and medicine and financial growth, homework help for all ages and all subjects including math, even interactive science. You have free access to robust platforms like Udemy, Gale Courses, Lynda.com, Learning Express, and Mango Languages. Spend time researching your family with Ancestry.com and HeritageQuest. Live tutors are ready to help students through Homework Louisiana by Tutor.com. Download eBooks through Biblioboard and Overdrive for free. Discover art and craft tutorials from Creative Bug. Download free music through Freegal. Even watch free movies from Canopy and IndieFlix. Whatever you want to do, you'll find a resource to help you do it in the digital library. So get a jump on your ACTs, create a business plan, or plan your next career move using the free digital tools available through your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. The Digital Library is waiting for you at ebrpl.com slash digital library. Log on today. Remember to check the library's website at ebrpl.com for updates about hours for telephone services and, of course, reopening. And now for today's contest, visit the library's Facebook page at facebook.com slash ebrpl. It's time for some shelfies. Show us how you're coping with staying at home. That's facebook.com slash ebrpl. And while you're there, enjoy. We are not your grandfather's library anymore. What's coming up on the Library Roadshow next month? We'll be ramping up for summer. I'll be showcasing some of those events. And next month, I'll share another resource from your digital library with you. Thanks so much for joining us on the Library Roadshow. And remember, while our 14 library locations remain closed due to COVID-19, the digital library is always open at ebrpl.com. And that's how we roll.